Hi, I'm Brandon Lewis from Betty Computing Design, and I'm here at NVIDIA's GTC 2019, and I'm with Manuela Papadabal, who is the CEO of a new company, Designated Driver. How are you doing? Hey, Brandon. Good seeing you. I'm great. I'm great. It's good to be here. Awesome. Um, so you're introducing a new type of technology that um, is, to me, I thought was still in the realm of science fiction, and that's the uh, teleoperator. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the teleoperator is uh, the human uh, support of an autonomous vehicle. So the state of California mandates that you have a human driver as a backup mm. anytime you are test driving your vehicle, whether it's level four or level five on public roads. So what we're doing is we're bringing that human control back into the driver's seat. Uh, so with teleoperations, what we're showing here at GTC in San Jose is our uh, autonomous vehicle mm -hmm. that's driving around the uh, the convention center mm -hmm. and our teleoperation station with the driver in Portland, Oregon, where our headquarter is. Okay. So we'll be driving few from uh, 700 miles from here. <laughs> wow. Um, so what's this behind us here? Is this is this here? Where is this? Yeah, so uh, this is streaming live from our office in, in Portland. Uh, you have the driver station, uh, various uh, monitors, and we've really analyzed uh, uh, the the behavior of the teleoperator because, again, the driver in that station is not the driver that's in the car. Mm -hmm. It doesn't see the same things. It doesn't have the haptic, the audio, the visuals, uh, the movement of the vehicle. So we want to make sure that we're providing the best uh, user experience and interaction. That's on the teleoperator side. And then on the uh, passenger side, we've created an HMI that creates that peace of mind. And you'll see that you'll be able to communicate with the teleoperator throughout your trip. You'll be able to see them, see their certification, if they're qualified to drive that type of vehicle. Because teleoperations is not just for passenger cars. Uh, it's for, it, it's applicable in, in trucking, in mining, agriculture, uh, shuttle companies. So uh, we're pretty excited about the opportunities. We're providing the uh, most relevant information at the most relevant time to the teleoperator. Um, we're looking at uh, latency, which is the communication numbers for, for uh, the connectivity between the car and the teleoperation station, the speed of the vehicle, uh, the environment. You see what you see on the lower screens are the cameras looking on the side and in the front. The top uh, middle screen is providing information uh, on, uh, in the back of the vehicle. And also there's an interior camera um, looking at the passengers and, and the vehicle. On the right, there's a map information. But again, it depends on the types of scenarios that, and the customers that you're, you're addressing. You'll see that it's changed to teleoperating mode. The car is in drive. And now Andrew, who's our teleoperator in Portland, has taken control of the vehicle. And Lucas is uh, sit back, relax, and he's uh, enjoying his ride. <laughs> wow. You mentioned the need potentially uh, to integrate with different types of vehicles, and obviously you're going to work with more than one customer. So what happens in the scenario where there are different sensors perhaps on a, on a particular uh, vehicle or um, a different software architecture? Is a uh, designated driver able to handle all of that different um, equipment? Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. and, and um, we have a team that has experience for over two decades in, in developing software for the automotive industry, mm -hmm. for technology companies. Walter Sullivan, whom you'll meet soon, mm -hmm. uh, he's our CTO, has worked at Microsoft, Electrobit. I've worked in, in the automotive industry my entire career. So we understand what it takes to develop such system. Mm -hmm. We take that information from any sensors and um, uh, we analyze it mm -hmm. and then we push it into, into our system. Mm -hmm. and that's what allows our vehicle to be teleoperated. Very good. Well, let's head out there. Let's do it. The scenario here is that the autonomy system is going to come down the street here around the corner and we're going to pull up to the side of the road as if there was a failure in the autonomy system and we need a, a teleoperator to take over the vehicle and, and bring us to a safe parking uh, location. So now the car is in parking. Um, you can look also at the dash, but the the uh, our teleoperation, our autonomous system will um, summon a teleoperator. So it will say, "I need teleoperations. I need support." Uh, so you will see on the screens here, 
the teleoperator is engaged, is communicating with us, and is ready to take over the vehicle. And we'll shift uh, the gear into drive and we'll uh, take us to our destination. Awesome. All right, requesting teleoperator. Acknowledged. Taking control of the vehicle. Hi, my name is Andrew. I'll be your teleoperator. I'm going to drive the vehicle a short distance and pull over and control my focus. If you have any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them at our destination. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, so Andrew's in our office in Portland. He's our driver. You, you saw on the screen that he, he's certified to drive this vehicle. As we're looking at, at uh, various levels of autonomy, you need to have the right certification. As we're looking at scaling the business and have a teleoperator maneuver various types of vehicles, whether it's a tractor or a truck or a shuttle mm -hmm. or a passenger vehicle, right? You need to have the right certifications and mm -hmm. licenses for it. So we have uh, the four cameras mounted mm -hmm. on the roof of the car, mm -hmm. and this is giving the remote operator uh, essentially a 360 degree view around the vehicle. So he sees, he sees outside the car like we do, which is how he's able to, to operate it. Uh, in the trunk we have uh, a remote, uh, um, a multi-radio cellular modem. So we're communicating back to Portland over a cellular modem that's using four independent cellular radios. And this gives us a very kind of robust and reliable communication back to Portland. Uh, and then there's also an industrial PC in the trunk, um, which is processing this video and then taking the commands from the remote operator in Portland and uh, using that to control the, control the vehicle. And so he's driving, the person in Portland um, is driving the vehicle much like if he were sitting in the car. The, t the teleoperation system is really sort of a, uh, a parallel system to the autonomy system because mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's sort of meant to be a fallback. Uh, we, we, sometimes I tell people I think about the, the teleoperation system as a kind of roadside assistance mm -hmm. for autonomy. So it has to be operational if the autonomy system isn't. So the autonomy system um, could be running on uh, NVIDIA's platforms or, or another hardware platform. Um, and, and we'll be sort of operating independently of that uh, you know, on our own platform. That's great. Yeah. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Thank it's, you. It's actually not as scary as I thought. <laughs> it feels like Lucas is driving, right? right. And, and he's not. As a matter of fact, if he was to take over control or press the, the pedals, the the control will be back to uh, to Lucas. So. Okay. <laughs> Andrew, hey, Andrew. Smooth riding over those grates and uh, the rail track. Thanks. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hand control back to Lucas now. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks so much. Well, uh, I'm surprisingly calm after that. <laughs> so, Let's keep calm. Yes. <laughs> Let's get in the car. <laughs> so, um, where can people go if they want to find out more information about designated driver and teleoperator uh, so technology? Designateddriver.ai is our website. Um, they can also go on autonomousstuff.com uh, to purchase our teleoperations kit. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still here at GTC for the next day, so uh, Walter and myself are here. Uh, LinkedIn is a good place to also get in touch with us uh, and also read your article, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh the heat's on now. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, like Manuela said, if you'd like to find out more, uh, visit them online at what's the website? Designateddriver.ai. Very good. Make sure you use the .ai. Uh, I'm Brandon Lewis. Thanks for watching.